Hello everyone, and welcome back to more Kato. Kato? Well, when we were last together, we started our trip through Paris, France with cats, and we were able to take three different pictures of three different cats. But I wasn't quite sure if I was able to save the game properly <laughs> before we ended the last episode. Well, thankfully, things seem to have worked out just fine, and we're going to pick up from where we left off, that's after we took our picture of the third cat and heading back home. So I'm just going to click on that little paw there in the middle. When I get home, I enter Ro's room. Hey, Ro. I just wanted to let you know I'll be visiting the bakery lunchtime tomorrow. I need to grab a cake for Rico from work's birthday. If you want to come along, I'm sure the cat will be there. I think I'd rather stay here. They say it's going to be very hot out tomorrow. But if you do see it, you know the rule, right? Right. When you see a cat for a second time, you must name it. I remember. I'll head out again and go to work soon. Good luck. Oh. When down by the canal, I keep an eye out for the scruffy cat, but I don't run into it again. Well, our only choice is to go to work, so we're off to work. Work turns out like usual, pretty uneventful. After some well-deserved sleep, I head out to grab that cake. To be honest, I'm more excited at the chance of seeing the cat again than to celebrate my co-worker. I should get the cat something. It looks like one that would appreciate something edible. I take a quick detour to a grocery store and quickly find myself in the small pet aisle. I have no idea what the cat likes, and the picture of the jars littered around its bed pop in my mind. Maybe they had contained something it liked, but I can't quite remember what label it had. What should I buy? Okay, hmm. Let's see, the, that, that cat was outside of a bakery. I don't know if that helps. Olives? I, I don't think you should feed cats olives. Um, shrimp? Hmm, I don't know. Shrimp? Shrimp? Like, I wouldn't think shrimp would be a bad choice for cats, but... Shellfish? I don't know. Let's go with normal cat treats. No. That jar had to be intended for the garbage. Oh, the cat's head popped up. I didn't see what it looked like, though. Who would leave a glass jar out and about for an animal, after all? At the end of the day, cat treats are designed for, well, cats to eat. Even if it doesn't like them, it'll hardly do any harm. Oh, there he is. When I reach the bakery, I find the cat resting in its makeshift bed yet again. It seems to be quite fond of its little box, even though it is visibly somewhat too small. Good afternoon, cat. I, pr I bring thee a tribute of treats. Oh. The cat raises its head with a slow, lazy sway, letting out a big yawn, exposing a line of long teeth. It blinks slowly at me, and I reach out, petting its head and scratching it a little behind the ear. Rosalie sends her well wishes. She also wants me to grant you a name, if that would be okay. Oh boy, what are we going to name the cat? Um, Schrodinger? <laughs> No, um, what do I want to name this cat? I think... I think I have a good name. Hang on. Alright, we're going to call this big old cat Bonaparte. How about Bonaparte? Does that sit well with you? Bonaparte meows. 
I know it's just in response to me making sounds at it, but I can't help to add... But I can't help but to add in a friendly, sarcastic manner. Then again, you don't seem to do much but sit. A pause accompanied by continued petting before I reach into my pocket for the treats. I've got something for you. Once in hand, I rattle the packet somewhat to get Bonaparte's attention. The cat eyes me with a sort of semi-enthusiastic curiosity in its eyes, standing up to get a good look at what I'm doing. Opening the bag of treats results in a meow as Bonaparte sniffs the air. I single out a treat and serve it to the cat out of the palm of my hand. Bonaparte gives it another skeptical sniff before tapping it with a paw. The treat, <laughs> clearly terrified, flees out of my hand and falls down into the bed. Bonaparte taps it some more, making sure it cannot escape again before looking up at me with expectant eyes. Go ahead, it's yours. It's certainly not for me. However, Bonaparte doesn't play doesn't pay the morsel any more attention, no matter how I try to coax it. I suppose Bonaparte must be a connoisseur of fine food, lacking any interest in cat treats. Well, that certainly didn't work out the way I'd hope. I'll have to try to appease the cat somehow else. Okay. Hmm. Scratch its cheeks, rub its belly. Let's, let's go with something simple like a massage. Uh, now that face did not look happy over there. If there's one thing I'm reasonably okayish at, it's giving a proper neck massage. Trying to get a good angle on the cat that's mostly round turns out to be a bit of a challenge, however. Bonaparte appears to chase my hand for cuddles, so I try to use that to position the cat properly. I need to lay down where it's head away from me so I can massage the back, which seems to be the best way to start. I get Bonaparte into position, but sitting up rather than laying down, so I improvise and massage it as it's sitting up. I start with the shoulders and work down from the back, but Bonaparte constantly tries to turn around and I have to hold the cat in place. I may not be the great cat whisperer, but even I can tell that this is going to be a complete flop. So to minimize the scale of said flop, I transition over to regular petting. Yeah, that's probably for the best. I realized that I had already spent much more time with Bonaparte than I had intended, and I need to pick up that cake already. Hesitantly, I give Bonaparte a last pet on the head before saying my goodbyes and escaping into the bakery. Ah, uh, here's a new scene. It's bustling with more activity than usual. When the owner scurries by, I receive the great news. Business has been going well, and they are moving to a new, bigger place not too far away. I congratulate her, apologize for not having much time to chat, before taking my leave, cake in hand. I'm home. Unlike the usual silence, Ro calls for me. Maximilier, can you come over here for a minute? When had she last been the one to call out to me? That's something I hadn't considered being a possibility in a very long time. I walk over to her room. Yes? Rosalie plays with her hands, as if she's unsure of how to bring up the subject. Um, thank you for the photos. They were nice. However... Yeah? That kitten... Was there anyone with it? No, it was alone, I think. Isn't that strange? For a kitten to be all alone, I mean? I guess, but it had a collar, so it might just live nearby. Oh yeah, she doesn't look very convinced. Yeah, look at that face. I'm not a happy camper. You know what? I'll see if I spot it on my walk and make sure. That'd be great! Um, yeah, let's ask her if she wants to come and see it with us. Hmm? I can see how she considers it. How her brow furrows and her eyes trace the crevices of the floorboards. 
It might get scared with yet another stranger around. Best you go alone. Scared of frightening it? That's not an excuse I ever heard from Rosalie, the great cat whisperer. Maybe this case is a little bit more delicate, but it's not like the kitten trusts me either. However, if she doesn't want to, I can't force her. I'll just do my best then. Wish me luck. Good luck. Empowered by her blessing, I head out. Just before leaving, I put the cake in the fridge and make my way to the old pedestrian street again. I'm surprised to see the kitten sitting next to the tree, just like it had the other day. It feels a little strange to find such a young cat out here all alone again. I would like to have a closer look at its collar, as it might have a number or an address on it. Oh, there's a little fuzz. The kitten is sitting next to the tree trunk looking at the passerby. It looks healthy, so somebody must be feeding it at least. I really hope that I'm just overthinking it. From our last meeting, I know I should be careful when I approach it. No sudden movements or sounds that will scare it. Having made my approach, I speak softly to it to get its attention. Hey, little friend. We need a proper name for you, too, don't we? Alright, I have an idea for this cat's name. I just need a minute. Alright, that took longer than expected, but we're going to name this little kitty Toulouse, like the little orange cat from the Aristocats. Toulouse, what do you think of that? The kitten glances at me with big eyes, which I decide to, decide to be an approval. This reminds me that I still have cat treats in my pocket. Maybe Toulouse will like them. But I'm not the only one with eyes for the kitten kid separates from his mother's hands, hand to chase the kitty. Toulouse runs away, but in my direction. I can't let it get away. Uh, let's follow the kitten. See, that seemed like a pretty happy face. It's probably for the best to let it run. The kid's caught by his mother, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. I follow the kitten around the corner and find it hiding in a doorway. Its body pressed into the corner, and its eyes watches me carefully. Ugh, the ordeal has gotten me pretty close. Maybe I have a chance here. Throw a treat to it. Or close in. We might scare it if we close in on it, but throwing stuff at it, I don't think is the right choice either. So we're going to try closing in on it. Oh, he did not like that. Toulouse up against the wall now. It can't get away from me in that corner. I could inch closer and hope that this will force the kitten to realize that I'm not dangerous. The street seems to be fairly clean, so I sit down and shuffle closer. Toulouse mews meekly. Toulouse mews meekly, but it doesn't like the situation. I'm sorry, Toulouse. But I have to look at your collar. You want to get home, don't you? I stop when the kitten is in reach, and I reach out my legs to block the way out. I stay like that for a moment, not to stress the kitten out. Alright, let's try to feed it out of hand. See, that made it happy. I slowly pick out a few treats and place them on my palm. I extend my hands slightly in front of me, make sure this kitten can see them. Toulouse looks at them, but hesitates, so I throw one of them halfway between us. The kitten crouches down and sneaks up to the treat, carefully watching me. After snacking on the nearest treat, it looks curiously at my hand, stretching its head out. It takes a reluctant step towards me, and I have to stay completely still. Movement, movement less like a statue, a gargoyle on Notre Dame. Or maybe not a gargoyle. They come to life, right? Well, only at night. 
As Sluice gets closer, he glows braver and walks up the last step to smell my hand. I feel its whiskers tickle my fingertips, but I stay as still as the fountain. No, as still as the mountain. Toulouse takes the first treat, and I can clearly hear it snap as it bites into it. One after another, the treats disappear until my hand is empty. I know Toulouse won't like it, but I still have to grab it to check its neck. No, oh, check its collar. My hand eases closer and picks the kitten up. I quickly press it against my chest to stabilize it. Toulouse tenses up as soon as I touch it, but feels slightly calmer after a few seconds in my bosom. There you are, such a good kitty. I try to soothe the kitten and gently stroke it with my thumb. When it is calm, I place it on my lap to check the collar. Toulouse meows and I find a phone number that I write down on my phone. When that is done, I loosen my grip and stroke the kitten gently to make it forget my manhandling. Then I have to let go, and Toulouse scurries away, but I don't think we are back on square one. I leave some treats on the ground in case it comes back, and leave. As soon as I get home, I walk in the Rose Room. I got a number. Toulouse had one on its collar. Oh, and I followed your rule. I named it. I also forgot to mention that I named the bakery cat as well. It's Bonaparte. What are we waiting for? Call it. I type the number in and let the signal go by. They go on for longer and longer. No answer? It doesn't appear so. I'll have to try again later. Well, keep me updated. I will. Alright, off to work. Maybe we'll see that other cat. I try to call a few more times. Eventually I give up and head out for work. There are slow news days and then there's dead news days. I need to get something published today or my boss will get on my case. Might as well have a stroll and see if I can at least find something worth writing about. The city beautifully lit in the dark as I find my way down the town path, the towpath, is probably one of the prettiest spots around here. Another advantage it has going for it is the fact that there are some arcane reason Rather, that for some arcane reason, almost nobody ever goes there, rendering it a quiet place for thoughts to be had. Hang on a moment. What's that sound? My pondering is interrupted by aggressive growling and a tremendous noise near the bridge. My curiosity is getting the better of me, and I silently walk over to check the source of the racket. Uh-oh. He is not a happy-looking camper. In the glow of the lamplight, there's a group of cats staring at each other, hissing and swatting their paws. Four of them seem to be working together against a somewhat larger, rougher-looking one. Could it be the same one as from the other day? It looks like it, and it appears to be in trouble. Okay, let them resolve it amongst themselves. Try to interrupt the fight. Pour water over them. Um, hmm... I definitely want to interrupt the fight, but let's do it in a way that will not get us so messed up. So we're going to pour water over them and just hope for the best. Okay, that looked like a good choice. His, his face over here looked happy. Four against one is hardly sporting, so why not even the odds a little bit? I have a bottle of water in my bag, and I'm not afraid of using it. I run at the scuffle. Hey! They don't pay me much heed, though. I unscrew the cork of my doomsday device and unleash a raging torrent at the cats. Well, at least as much of a raging torrent as a bottle would allow. While my aim is not perfect, I do manage to hit the four upstarts, but the older cat ends up being collateral damage in the process. 
The youngsters dart into the night, hissing with displeasure, and the remaining cat stays with me. It stands alert and stares at me with those piercing eyes. I can't say it looks particularly happy at the present. Breaking eye contact with a nod, it starts to clean off the water with its tongue. Huh. Maybe the cat is at least a bit appreciative for the help. It's hard to tell, and that leaves me feeling like both the conquering hero and the ill-willed villain. In the end, I think it doesn't know what... In the end, I think it does know that I was trying to help. I stay for a good while, making sure the pack of rascals don't return. In the meantime, I should come up with a name for it. Well, I do have a name for this cat. But again, I want to make sure I'm spelling it right, so I'll be right back. Alright, so we are naming this kitty cat Nicodemus. Not after the biblical figure, but rather after the rat from The Secret of Nim. More time passes before I address the cat in a relaxed tone. Okay, Nicodemus, time for me to go. I've got work to do, but I'll see you around. I turn around and continue on my way down along the canal. A few moments later, I notice a shadow out of the corner of my eye by my left foot. Looking down, I find that Nicodemus has decided to come along. We follow the canal in silence, a feeling of mutual respect in the air. Maybe we have th some things in common after all. Oh, that's a happy cat. A few more minutes go by before the cat stops sitting by the water once again. I feel oddly compelled to find a justification for staying here. Um... Hmm. Clean up the garbage? Well, if we clean up the garbage, it'll be nicer around here for the cat. But you know what? He looks like he needs food. So let's offer him some food. And that did not look like a good choice. I still have a few treats left, so I fish them out of my pocket and crouch down, offering them from my hand. Yeah, look at that face. He's like, what, really? <laughs> Nicodemus looks at me with a spark of suspicion glinting in its eye, not making any move to approach. I throw the treat between us just in case he doesn't want to get close to me. It walks up to the treat with a scowling expression and swats it dismissively into the water below. Note to self, Nicodemus really doesn't like cat treats. Um, well, let's not try to touch him. That will probably upset him. Let's skip the treats over the water. See, that one he seemed a little more neutral about. Well, if cats don't like these things, why bother lugging them about? I weigh a treat in my hand, feeling its weight and shape. I calculate the perfect skip toss in my mind before reeling back. My whole body flowing into the throw. I unleash the treat with flawless timing. It cuts through the air with a purpose. Its, desti its destination preordained, the outcome already determined. With a graceful arc, it drops. With a graceful arc, it drops out of the air, maybe two feet away, hits the surface, and sinks with an undignified plop. <laughs> All right, Nicodemus like that. Nicodemus shows. Nicodemus does show signs of amusement. And thusly encouraged, I repeat the procedure until I run out of sweets. The last one managing to skip maybe a centimeter or so. All right, well, I guess he's done. <laughs> While certainly not the smoothest of friendships, I get the feeling that Nicodemus is at least somewhat less indifferent towards me. Nicodemus and I would have to part ways for now, but I'm looking forward to meeting it again. Once back at work, inspiration hits me. I could always write a little piece about the issue of abandoned cats around the city. After all, I never noticed before, so bringing it to light might result in some good. Alright, well, I think that is good for this episode, and I think this is a good place to stop, because returning home in the morning, I met with a surprise, and we'll find out what that surprise is in the next episode. 
So thank you for watching this episode of Cat 2, and I look forward to playing more with you next time.